This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, if you um, think back to uh, one of the earlier lectures, uh, I said uh, one of the jobs of the management accountant was to um, calculate the cost of whatever it is we produce. And I did set up um, a simple cost card where we were showing the costs, the direct costs, materials, labour, the prime cost, the overheads. Well, we're going to carry on effectively from there and show how the overheads bit of it can be uh, need a bit more work and how we deal with it. Now, I'll build it up with a series of little examples. Uh, first of all, a very simple one, but then we'll get a bit more fun. Uh, there is quite a lot to go through, so I will break down this chapter into two or three smaller lectures uh, so that you don't fall asleep. But to explain, first of all, look at example one with me. A very simple one. Uh, really, a, I think a bit of revision of something earlier, but then I'll show you how it can be more interesting. XPLC produces desks. Each desk uses three kilos of wood at a cost of four dollars a kilo and takes four hours to produce. Labour is paid at the rate of two dollars an hour. The fixed costs of production, or our overheads, are estimated to be 700,000 per annum per year, and we expect to produce 50,000 desks per year. And what we're required to do is calculate the cost of producing one desk. And for this we produce a cost card. We want the cost per unit. And we list the costs involved and add them up. So what have we got? We've got wood, our materials. It says it uses each unit uses three kilos of wood, and the wood costs four dollars a kilo, and so twelve dollars a unit. No problem. Uh, what else? We've got labour. It takes four hours to produce. And labour's paid at two dollars per hour, a total of eight. So so far a cost of twenty, and although we don't normally label it, that's the prime cost, twenty dollars. In addition, though, we've got our overheads. We've got fixed cost of production, seven hundred thousand per year. How are we going to get a cost per unit? Well, no problem. We expect to spend 700,000. We expect to produce 50,000 desks. So how much is each desk going to cost us? 700,000 in total. Divide by the 50,000 desks we're going to produce. And that gives us an overhead cost per desk. $14. And so a total cost, $20.34. So there, I hope, nice and easy. A little bit of terminology. That exercise we did, you know, to get the overheads per unit, you can't measure it in each unit, each desk. We did that dividing. We say we're absorbing the overheads. absorbing this $14 we've got we call the absorption rate notice the spelling slightly different that's all my fault and the 34 it is the total cost it's actually what we call the total absorption cost Because you will see in a much later chapter, or not a much later chapter, the next one, there is a, a, a different approach we could use to costing. Anyway, there we are, and I don't think there, I hope, no problem. 
material slave we can measure over as we just absorbed, we charged, we divided the total by the total number of units. However, that's perhaps a bit too easy. And uh, there are two problems that can be involved which give us slightly more work. And the first problem you'll see mentioned on the next page <laughs> is where you produce more than one product in the same factory. So have a look at example two with me to explain what our problem is and how we deal with it. XPLC produces desks and chairs in the same factory. Each desk uses three kilos of wood at a cost of four dollars a kilo and takes four hours to make. Each chair uses two kilos of wood at a cost of four dollars a kilo and takes one hour to make. Labour is paid at two dollars an hour. Fixed cost of production, seven hundred thousand a year. And we expect to produce 30,000 desks and 20,000 chairs. And we want the cost per unit for each of them. I'll do them side by side. We'll have a cost card for um, desks. Dollars per unit and a cost card for chairs. And it starts off easy enough. That the materials are wood. Each test uses three kilos, and each kilo is four dollars, a total of twelve. And each test uses four hours of labour. Uh, further down, we pay labour two dollars, which is eight. Easy, just like before. Uh, with the chairs, each chair uses two kilos of wood. At four dollars is eight. And it takes one hour of labour. At two dollars is two. So again, no problem. However, what about the overheads? Remember, they're both produced in the same factory. It says the total is seven hundred thousand. Uh, we are going to produce in total 50,000 units, 30,000 desks, 20,000 chairs. What we could do, but don't, if you're doing this with me, don't copy this down. You could do what we did before and say, OK, in total we're spending 70,000. In total, 30 plus 20, we're producing 50,000 units. And therefore, each unit desks, chairs, is costing at $14. Now we could do that, there are no rules, you know, in re real life we do whatever we think is most sensible. But I would argue here that that's not very fair, because each desk spends four hours in the factory, and each chair only spends one hour. And I don't know, it would seem more sensible if desks take four times as long in the factory, wouldn't it be more fairer to give them four times as many overheads? And so what we're going to do, which I think you'll agree is much fairer, to account for that, to say, you know, a desk takes four times as long in the factory, so let's give it four times the cost, we're going to work out how much the overheads are costing per hour and then charge the desks. We'll need a little bit of workings. We say, well, what's the total overheads? No problem, 700,000. We then say, how many hours are we working in the factory? Well, remember, we're making two products. We're making desks 
And desks we're making 30,000 uh, units. And how many hours does each desk spend in the factory? Four hours. So we're spending 120,000 hours making desks. In addition, we're making chairs. We're making 20,000 chairs. And each chair takes one hour. So we're spending another 20,000 hours making chairs. So in total, we're working 140,000 hours. And so we say, OK, then. We're spending 700,000 in overheads. We're working 140,000 hours. How much is it costing us per hour? The overhead cost per hour Seven hundred thousand, hundred and forty thousand hours is what five dollars per hour. So every hour they spend in the factory is costing us five dollars in overheads. Well, now we can go back and finish the cost cards. How many hours does a desk spend in the factory? Four hours. And how much does each hour cost us in overheads? Five dollars. So each unit's costing 20. How many hours does a chair spend in the factory? One hour. Each hour's costing five dollars in overheads. Five dollars. And so the total cost, 40 for a, a desk, and what, 15? for a chair, which I think is a lot fairer. You know, again, in real life, you do whatever you think is more sensible. But I do think that's a lot fairer way of dealing with the overheads, that because a desk takes four times as long in the factory, we've ended up giving them four times as much the overheads. Now, I keep saying there's no rule. Uh, you could do it per unit. I've said why. I don't think it's very fair here. Most common is to do it based on the labour hours they work. And we could do the same thing. If you, were, if you were mainly made by machine, we could do it working out the cost per machine hour in the factory. In the exam, you will be told, and here the question actually said, overheads are to be absorbed, charged on a labour hour basis. And so again, the dividing of, sorry, where are we? The dividing of the 700,000, 104,000 hours, there we're absorbing the overheads. And the five pounds, five dollars rather, per hour is the absorption rate. So I don't know, I think that's fair enough. The first way they can make a question, uh, you know, needs slightly more thought, slightly more working. All right, I said there'll be several lectures on this chapter, so I'll stop this one here. But in the next lecture, I'll bring in the second problem, which is where you've more than one department in the factory. But I'll go through that in the next lecture.